My name is Dave Morrow. Nine months of each year, I live out of my vehicle. I travel the wilderness by foot on an endless backpacking and landscape photography trip. I want to teach and share the photography and outdoor skills that I use on these trips. I don't want to spend hours editing video or sitting in front of a computer, so I made some rules. First, everything shot on GoPro. This was the best way I found to record quickly on a consistent basis. Second, I can only spend 20 minutes editing each video. So thanks for watching, and welcome to the Landscape Photography Journals. I wanted to start creating some more advanced photography videos where I don't explain the basic step-by-step -step shooting technique for everything that I'm doing. The point of these videos is that you can follow me on my adventures and watch the actual shooting process and thoughts that I go through while capturing images. If you're confused by any of the steps in these videos, you can watch all of the previous videos in this series which explain the basics of what I'm doing. So I woke up this morning and it was starting to snow out and then probably been three hours since I got up around six and it's probably laid three to four inches since then, but really good shooting conditions. So I wanted to go through some techniques for shooting a close-up scene like this. So I'm going to crop this in. Here you can see it right now. But as you can see, I cropped it in so it's right around this close foreground. So I'm going to balance these two trees with some of the stuff on this side of the composition as well. So as far as this goes, when I'm out shooting in the snow, I have my camera set up with my composition and then I take a bunch of different shots at different shutter speeds and stuff like that so I can see the snow moving through the scene. So depending on how far you are zoomed in or out, if you use faster shutter speeds, you can actually see that snow coming down through the center of the composition. And sometimes it looks cool, sometimes it actually subtracts from the actual picture. So that's why I use this dry fit towel up here. Every time I'm not shooting, I just put this back on. So I'm gonna focus on that tree right there. And I'll just zoom in at 100% using my zoom button, which I have right there, and then I'll use back button focus. So the next thing I need to do here is select an aperture for this scene. I just do that by dialing in my f-stop value. So there's not a whole lot of depth of field in this scene. There's this close tree right here, then there's the distant trees in the background, but they're not that far away. So I don't think I'll have a problem with just one single shot here. So f11 will work for that. Now last thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna pull up my histogram. See, there's my histogram. And I think that's about the correct histogram for this shot, meaning it's just a little bit right of center. Now, you could go a little bit brighter here, but it would start to blow out these yellows because they're such light colors. So as far as the histogram goes, I'm just using my exposure compensation here, and I'll go left, for darker and you can see automatically the shutter speed gets shorter there or I could go right for brighter and automatically the shutter speed gets longer so you can see that my ISO is at 100 now now if I had say moving leaves in these trees and I wanted to make that shutter speed really quick and snappy I would just go to my ISO here after dialing in the actual exposure of the scene and if I wanted this to get faster as far as shutter speed goes, I would just increase my ISO. So you can see as the ISO goes up, the shutter speed gets faster and faster. Now, if I want to try different movement with the snowflakes here, or snow coming down, that's what I would have to do. So what I'm going to do here is capture a bunch of different shots with different ISO values, in turn producing different shutter speeds. Now that should really allow me to see different movement of these snowflakes through the scene. So I'll take the first shot here at ISO 100, and I wanna make sure that my lens is cleaned off. So I just take this, and I'll wipe down the lens. So after that lens is cleaned off, quickly focus. I have all my settings dialed in, going with ISO 100, F11, and then I just dialed in this exposure value or compensation until it's pushed all the way over to the right but not quite hidden. After that I'll push the shutter button. So this is the base file. This is the file with the best amount of detail. Everything should be clean because I just wiped the lens off. 
So it's a really a perfect image right there. Now, if I want to blend in other files, beating other pictures with moving snowflakes, I can do that now. But I always want to make sure I grab that base file to work off of first. So if anything changes in this scene, I still have everything in that first picture. Now these other pictures will just be for snowflakes streaming through the scene. So all I would have to do here is increase my ISO. And I can go up to 800. So if I go to 800, that gives me one tenth of a second shutter speed. Now I want to get to about, I don't know, one thirtieth of a second here. So since I've already done that, max out my ISO, I could also drop my f-stop a little bit if I wanted. F8 will work just fine since it's just capturing the snowflakes. That's why I used F11 for that initial image, so I would capture the depth of field for the entire scene first. So these secondary images, since I'm just using them for small pieces of the scene, I can change my settings around a little bit. So that gave me a little bit faster shutter speed. The last thing I would do here is darken the image slightly. And that gives me even faster. So I'm just darkening the image using exposure compensation. So let's try that. Now, it might turn out that for this amount of snow that's coming down, since it's slowed down a little bit, I might not be able to catch those intense flurry of snowflakes anyway. So we'll, treat, we'll see, I'll try a few different shutter speeds here. There's one. Then I'll go 20th, try that as well. But in some situations or some lighting conditions, it's really hard to catch those moving through the scene. So I have now moved to a completely different location, climbed up the hill a bit, was, switch this down in here, hiked up here. Now you can see like the backgrounds of the mountains. You can barely see it through all the snow that's coming down. But I picked a composition here like that so it's basically isolating those two large trees back there from the rest of this landscape and some of this also provides a leading line drawing your attention down to those trees so I'll just go through these really quickly what I did want to note though is when your camera meters this scene meaning it just reads the amount of light coming in from the specific composition it has a very hard time doing that with snow so it tries to darken snow down towards 50% gray or right in the middle of the histogram. Well, instead of doing that, you actually want to expose snow up closer to white, and then when you get back to post processing, you can darken it down to wherever it should be. So I'll just first grab a focal point here, right in the center, and I'm just zoomed in at 100%. That looks good. It's right back on those trees. My horizons level. So the first thing I need to do is just select the correct depth of field covering me from these nicely covered plants right here all the way to the mountains way back there. So I'm going to shoot f11 for this shot. ISO stays at base unless I need it for longer or shorter shutter speeds. So now I can just pull up my histogram. Oh, skipped it. And what I'll do is I'll increase or decrease my exposure compensation, which is right here, by dialing this left or right. So if I want it to get darker, I go left. If I want it to get brighter, I go right. And aperture priority automatically reads that level of brightness in the exposure and applies the correct shutter speed to match. So I just need to watch the histogram. I'm pushing that far right without going over. So I'm just going up two thirds of a stop in exposure compensation. Now you can see the histograms pushed up to the edge, which is representing nearly all of this scene here. It's all very light, except some of the tree trunks are dark and some of the foreground is slightly dark. So where that starts to darken down, those tree trunks and darker things are represented right about the midtones and slightly lower as well. So most of the scene is in the light midtones, meaning all the bright snow, all the darker shades of snow. So my goal is just to look at the histogram and be able to say which spikes in that histogram vertically correlate to which tonal ranges in the scene. So you can just remember that the bottom or horizontal axis of the histogram is black to white tonal scale. And then the spikes above those, meaning the vertical spikes in the histogram, just denote how many pixels 
exist in those tonal values from the scale of black to white. So on the scale of black to white, this is about 75% as bright as pure white, that large spike. So that's saying that that's a light gray tonal value. That's just covering most of the snow in here that doesn't have direct light. Now where that spike goes down to the right and then spikes up slightly again, that would be the very brightest portions of this scene, such as up in the sky here and any, any snow that sun hits down in the foreground. So that looks good. We're not losing any light detail. Yep, perfect. All right, so at this point, I don't need a faster or show, slower shutter speed there because everything in the scene is standing still. There's no reason to change the shutter speed. So I'll just leave ISO alone. So after I've gone through my whole setup process, put it on a five second timer, wait, dampen out any shake, and then I shoot it. Now I can check focal point first, so I'll just zoom in on this review image. I'm checking where I focused, meaning where that red single point spot focus was. Then I'll check directly down from it and directly up from it as well. That makes sure the whole depth of field ranging from the front to the back is in focus. That looks nice. So now I can check my histograms. All of the histograms are pushed all the way to the right, but none of them are exceeding the right. So when you're looking at red, green, and blue histograms, if each of your red, green, and blue channels is pushed all the way over to the right without exceeding, that means you're going to have a pretty neutral white balance. So if there's a tent going on, it means that red would be farther to the right than green and blue. That would make a red tent to your photo. And then you can kind of look at that for the other ones and how they mix together. But you'll know that on a scene like this, I've dialed in the correct white balance if each the red, green, and blue channel look very close to the same when they're pushed all the way over to the right. That just means that all my colors, which are additive here, if you add red, green, and blue together in this color space we're using, the RGB color space that is, red, green, and blue combine to make white. RGB is just an additive color space.